What's it like to love somebody who's a formerly incarcerated person? And what's the journey for someone trying to re-enter society who has spent years in prison? Those are just two of the questions explored in Hulu's new series that premiered last night on prison. And with me today, yes. Woo! And with me today are the stars and creator of the show. We have Kerry Washington, Hi. Delroy Lindo, yes. Marquis Richardson, yes. Bali Rocco Tuavana. Yes! yes. yes. Joel yes. McIntosh, the star woo, woo, of the show, woo, 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 woo. and Tracy McMillan. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. And Marquis. And Mar Marquis? I said, I go, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, come on. I, had, okay. there was a, I got them all. I got them all. <laughs> I'm a professional. They pay me big money here. Excellent. Big money is a falafel sandwich, but I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, Tracy, yes. you are right. You would love a sandwich oh, afterwards, sir. Well, let's see how the we interview eat goes. We as a cast. Yeah. One of the things we do well as That's a cast true. is eat. Yes. 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 You eat well, you're happy. Yes. You're in Austin, you're at South By, an eating Thrilled. town, premiering the show that yes. premiered last night. Mm -hmm. I saw your tweets yeah. and on Instagram. Yes. Tracy, this yeah. is based on your life. You wrote a memoir. The title of the memoir is awesome. I love you and I'm leaving you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fantastic title. Sad. In part, it's about your relationship with your father, yeah. who was a formerly incarcerated person, yeah. and how that relationship impacted all other relationships. Yes. And of course, when you're writing that, you're like, I'm gonna be played by Kerry Washington, mm, Jordan. No, yeah. <laughs> but tell us about this story, and specifically how that translated to the mm -hmm. screen. Well, in some ways, this show is the sequel to my memoir. Because mm. I wrote the memoir mm. when my dad was still in prison. But, you know, I knew he was going to get out eventually. And I had a lot of anxiety. Like, how am I going to deal with that? What's it going to be like to have a relationship with my dad on the outside? Mm. I didn't know. And what's it going to be like for him to have a relationship with my son? And so because I'm a writer and because I'm a television writer, I naturally wanted to explore that. Not necessarily in real life, you know, <laughs> but I wanted to explore it in a TV show because I know that my situation is, you know, millions of Americans are in the same situation that I was in. And I just, this is a very American story, really. It's a part of our, our social situation that we really have not dealt with. And I'll share, it's uh, part of my story as well. Mm. Uh, when I heard about this, mm. My antennas went up, my spidey sense always goes up when dealing with incarcerated people because both my parents were incarcerated. Wow. And I was in, yeah, and I was in my 20s. Mm. I had to take care of my family. And they re entered society, they're doing well. But what people don't focus on oftentimes is not just the incarcerated person, they get demonized, but yeah. the impact. Yes. That has on the and family, the that's community, it. and generations. Mm -hmm. And with that, Generationally. Mm -hmm. generations. It, it, and I have described the incarceration system as, uh, as Galactus, the destroyer of generations. Mm. Uh, mm. Two, for those who don't know, America incarcerates more people than any other country on earth. Yeah. Two right. million people are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And with all of that, we were sitting here, and mm -hmm. the producer and I were talking, we were like, why did Carrie decide to star in this and also executive produce? She has the whole world in front of her, and she mm -hmm. goes, I'm gonna invest in this story. Mm. For that reason, mm -hmm. for exactly that reason, that there are 80 million Americans living with a criminal record. And as you said, for each of those 80 million people, there's a circle of loved ones around them, mm. people who care about them. And as that person navigates reentry, the whole community navigates reentry. And I just thought it was such an important story that needed to be told. I'm also just a huge Tracy McMillan fan. I love her, I think she's brilliant. We can fanboy and fangirl for Tracy right now. Right, yeah. she's the best. Yes. Um, I love her. Uh, and the fact that mutual. she had the willingness to be this generous mm -hmm. about her story and put her family's journey, her journey with her father at the center of this story, it felt like how do I not offer myself to this mm. and um, and I asked her if I could play Paige um, mm. and then we set off on this journey to you know flesh it out and build it out and find a great showrunner and find a great dad and mm. son and all the, uh, the inner child and <laughs> sexy love interest and all of it you know that's you slash that's you officer, own it. Own it. slash okay. parole officer yeah. um, <laughs> so you know that it just it, it's the fact that this story is particular to these families but that these families are all of us mm. yeah and uh, can I say something you please. Can say as you want as an please. extension uh, to your not as um, as an extension of Kara's response to your question, mm. I also believe it goes right to the heart of who you are as a creative worker, mm -hmm. Mm. from the standpoint of wanting to be involved with stories mm. that directly impact 
the human condition. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And that, that ethos, that mm -hmm. dynamic, <laughs> is very much at the center of what it is that we're all mm. doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is not, in, in, in my experience, in the experience of making the work, it is not anybody getting up on a soapbox. Mm -mm. It's not anybody no. waving. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very intentional application to, okay, we want to tell this story. Um, we're not sure how we're going to tell the story, but we're going to make our best effort to tell this story in as genuine and in as authentic a way as we can. And we set off in that process. And just one more small thing. Yeah. No, <laughs> my, um, I have an extra, as somebody involved with this um, extraordinary group of people making this work, audiences like yourself, mm -hmm. when you speak about the fact that it resonates so personally for yeah. you, just as the young lady who was just moderating our mm -hmm. Q&A, it resonated for her and various of the journalists mm -hmm. that we spoke with. Mm -hmm. That is just an extra, an added, really profound affirmation mm -hmm. for the work. Mm. And I have a gratitude yes. to people like yourself, mm -hmm. and I think we all do, that it touches you uh, and people like you in the way that it does. And that well, you so share thank, it. And yeah. that you're willing share to share. It. Well, the gratitude is, is, is to all of you, the creators, because as you said, it impacts so many people. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when it comes to incarcerated people, oftentimes they're demonized mm -hmm. yes. or they're yes. uh, punchline. Mm -hmm. And what this show does, uh, the tone of the show is very interesting because you're like, oh my gosh, incarceration. But mm -hmm. the show begins with Carrie, Carrie's character just well, you, on Instagram, right? <laughs> Doing really well. Therapist, bubbly person, suburbs. And then here comes what the showrunner has described, Delroy, as black Ted Lasso. Yeah. You know, yes. The formerly yes. incarcerated person who's smooth, who's charming, who's funny, completely disrupts what we think of our incarcerated persons. I have to ask, when you're described as black Ted Lasso. I didn't but, know that until right now. Right now. Yeah. I've been saying it yeah, all week. Your, oh, isn't it perfect? It's right. so your perfect. Your response to your showrunner calling your character the black Ted Lasso. A, I had no clue. <laughs> B, um, because I have not seen Ted Lasso. <laughs> okay. I have no reference. You and me are the only Americans who have not seen not Ted Lasso. Seen Shame okay. on you both. I don't, I don't, Shame. I don't Shame. Feel Shame so, on you both. I don't feel so bad. I think we can start extending the list. I so, oh! oh! <laughs> we love you, Ted Lasso. It's a fantastic show I have heard. <laughs> right. But... <laughs> That doesn't matter to hey, me because hey, what hey. matters to me, oh, that it doesn't matter to me per se. What matters to me is that at the, in the final analysis, the work is resonating as it is resonating. Mm. That's the most important yeah. thing. Delroy, you said that you take part in narratives that are historical correctives. Yeah. And this mm. show is yeah. a present day corrective. And Marquis, mm. you have uh, been in shows, this show, Dear White People. Yes. The woke virus has yes. infected you, apparently. Oh. You're <laughs> spreading it everywhere. Uh, there is no nice. woke virus. It's going to be like this for the next 10 minutes, by the way. But speaking about <laughs> narratives with people of color at the center, uh, doing the corrective, especially in a town like Hollywood that has been very white and has made villains and punchlines of our people, right? Why is it so important? And you could disagree with me on that if you want. But why is it so important to play your character in this show with this story? Um, well, I feel like, to be clear, Mal is a criminal justice social caseworker. And so... Sexy mm -hmm. criminal yeah. justice. Yeah. 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 You said it. <laughs> yes, not parole officer. Not, not parole, not parole yeah. officer. Um, but he was Good someone... Corrective. Yeah. See, he's correcting right now. Correcting, correcting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but for me, he was someone who is so forgiving and compassionate and empathetic. And so he was also somebody who I wanted to be mm. um, when the story came into my ether and, and life and I didn't know that at the time so um, why because you're none of those things because yeah, I am no. none of those <laughs> yeah, things you are I, 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 <laughs> like look y'all see you. this and then the other him. side <laughs> it's the contrast it's, it's the, no. the joker um, <laughs> but uh, I, I also feel like it's it's important to uh, you know show that 
black people and black men specifically can be vulnerable and can be yes. and can warmth, be, and happiness, and healing. And care about each other. Yeah. Yes. Care about and care for each exactly. other. Mm -hmm. And speak, Amen. speaking Amen. about caring for each other, the, the self-care aspect, because your, your character is a therapist. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, everything's going well, but just right underneath, there's cracks. And each time in the show, it's not a spoiler, it's in the first episode, each time she's going through crisis, the inner the inner child. The inner child, the star of the show. Yeah. Nine-year-old yeah. Jordan right yeah. there in the center. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Pops through, <laughs> stares at the camera, and, yeah. and reveals what the inner, the inner yeah. child says. And so, Jordan, being the method actor that you are, uh, how did you... Because you're playing two, right? You're playing Tracy. You, you, got the, you, got, yeah. you got Tracy there. It's her story. But then you're also doubling, if you will, Carrie's character. <laughs> And you're the only character that I think, as, as I've seen, talks directly to the audience, right? Oh. I think so, right? Yeah. If I'm right mm -hmm. so far. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, take, and, and you're, I think, just nine, go, no, going on 50 uh, <laughs> with wisdom. Yeah. Just, just all of that, how did you convey that, and how did you do it so well, and why are you so talented at such a young age? Um, <laughs> I mean... Hold I up. Gave you, I gave you a big question. I gave you, like, hold three up. questions. Um, um, how, I mean, the reason why I have this talent is technically my energy and my personality um uh, which is can you read amazing the other, um the um other i asked you so questions. much because i was so enamored by your energy and your <laughs> presence but i'm saying how was it like just to just to be in the presence of carrie oh. learn from oh. her and play the young version of her character younger younger <laughs> <laughs> I mean, great, because, of course, Polly already knows what I'm going to say. I got to say some spicy language. Spicy language. <laughs> um, I also got to match Miss Carrie, which was a double A+. Miss Carrie. Yes, mm -hmm. our matching outfit. Oh. Mm -hmm. So fun. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. so fun. So, so, so fun. angry. She looks so much better than me in all the outfits. <laughs> you were great. You we loved great. you. Uh, and Folly, you, you have an amazing story. I was reading that. Like, so first of all, in the show, speaking about warmth, uh, mm -hmm. you, you are the son, the grandson, yes. and in the first episode, without spoiling too much, that anchor that you have to uh, Black Ted Lasso's <laughs> uh, <laughs> character is what brings you back to the family, right? So you are, to me, when I was watching it, I'm like, the young generation, mm -hmm. warmth, innocence. How'd you approach that as a young actor surrounded by this talent mm -hmm. right here? Yeah, um, I think... Uh, towards the beginning of the show, um, all I really wanted at that point was, because Finn had only known a life with his mm. single mother, Paige. He'd never known anything other than that. And all he knows is that another, another man will be mm. intruding into the household. Mm. <laughs> and all I'm thinking is, how do I... How do I protect myself? How do I protect mm -hmm. my mother? How do I wow. protect the household? Wow, 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 mm wow. -hmm. And so that's why mm -hmm. in the, when I first meet Delroy, um, there's a lot of analyzing in that scene, a lot of just paying attention and... You're uh, scanning them. Yeah, scanning them. Yeah, that's a great word. Um, mm. And of course, getting to do that with... The man. <laughs> the black Ted Lasso. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, that's um, a keeper, huh? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only it's calling you that one. one. <laughs> um, was... So cool. The um, uh, literally the first day I met him, I think the chemistry was just immediate. It was insane. Immediate. It was it was. Um, Delroy brings a comfortability everywhere he goes. Mm. Every, like right I, now. I, yeah, right now. Mm. The um, I'd always been nervous because you know I'm, I don't know. You know you're you're going to be working with someone for a long time. You've never met these people in your life. You have no idea who these people are, but. Being in Delroy and Carrie's presence, I've never felt more safe and comfortable on a set ever. So. And it seems you all you. really like each other, care for each other, yeah. and invest in each other's happiness, which is always wonderful to see. Yeah. You can yes. applaud that. Yeah. I mean... It was also... <laughs> and go ahead, Tracy. No, I was just going to say, you know, the relationship coach, relationship expert part of me wants to create secure functioning, what's called a secure functioning environment. That mm -hmm. is the most important thing. If we're going to do anything of meaning, if we, we need to feel safe. We're human mm -hmm. beings, you know? Okay. And so I feel like what I see when I see this and what you're describing is it's a safe place, you know? Um, and I know definitely the entertainment business has lots of people who are 
not secure functioning necessarily, mm. but I, you know, that's like the number one thing for me is like, does everyone feel safe and are we able to be in relationship with one another? Mm. And to that end, yeah. to that end, one of the most rewarding aspects of this journey, and there were a lot, mm -hmm. but to work with Folly mm -hmm. and to, and this is not by way of um, lessening the work mm -hmm. with it, but there was something particular about Folly, the way that he evolved through the eight episodes and mm -hmm. specifically the relationship that we had, the chemistry, you called it the chemistry that we had, which resulted in, and I've spoken about this a couple of times, one of the richest acting experiences, mm -hmm. the scene, for those okay. of you who have not seen all of the episodes, I'm not going to spoil this, but there's a scene, I believe it was in the last episode, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. when we were all in the house, mm -hmm. and it was really quite extraordinary what he brought. Look at that. Look at that. No, I know. I, for I, us. I wish I had five more minutes no, with you. Sorry. Hopefully I have... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. And, and, and it resulted, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it resulted in one of the most um, fullest, the most incendiary in, the, uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way um, and creatively rewarding moments in the whole journey. Mm. And, and there were a lot of them. Uh, you did that. Oh, Thank you. I, 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 I'm out of time, but I'm going to go ahead and just take what? 30 extra seconds because what are they going to do? Are they going to fire me? They can't. <laughs> yeah. uh, sandwiches. Delroy Lindo has been in the game since 1975. All right. <laughs> there was no Onyx Collective. That's mm -hmm. right. Onyx That's right. Collective That's is now right. with Disney and Hulu centering on people of color, content creators, creating, creating content stories by people of color <laughs> for everyone. Yes. Oh, gosh. With 30 seconds that we have, yeah. Delroy, with what we're dealing with right now, AP African American Studies being banned, books by black women being banned, anti-wokeness, anti-CRT, and you see the Onyx Collective. You've been in it, in the trenches for 40 plus years. Yeah. What gives you hope for all of us in our stories moving forward? I want to believe that an entity like Onyx is a beacon for the future, a beacon from, from, not only from the standpoint of the commitment to doing this kind of work, but that that becomes a reality. Because we're in a, as you say, we're in a particular moment right now, right? In the entertainment industry, in this country. Mm -hmm. I hope that Onyx and organizations like Onyx can become beacons for the commitment to tell, mm -hmm. telling our stories right. and all of their complexity, mm -hmm. all of the dimension, because that is one of the things that has sorely been missing and certainly was missing when I started mm -hmm. um, working, has been missing from the entertainment industry, from the, in the culture at large. So that's what I hope. Thank you all. Thank you for the show. Thank, Thank you. you for humanizing Thank you. incarcerated people. Thank you. By far, my most favorite interview of South by Southwest. Yeah. On Prison. On Prison premiered March the 10th on Hulu. That was yesterday. Yes. Please watch stay. Them all. Watch, them all. watch them all. Watch them all. Please stay tuned to our live stream at youtube.com slash SXSW because we've got a lot more to come from South by Southwest Studio, including interviews with Deepak Chopra, Whoa. Bob Odenkirk, Whoa. Elizabeth Olson, Whoa. Anthony Mackey, hey. and much, much more. You can find our complete schedule of interviews on our website at sxsw.com studio. I'm your host, Wajahat Ali. Thanks for watching.